it's not just about human capital learning industry. This is about business who spend over $300 billion a year. It highlights an opportunity, if you will, to, if we're going to spend that money, just be a good steward over that money. All right, welcome to uh, this episode of LearnOps Leadership Series. My guest today is Dr. Sydney Savion, um, CLO, Chief Learning Officer at City Block Health. Very excited about this, not only because um, Sydney's been named as a learning futurist, CLO of Year of 2020, has written over 38 publications, has won awards for the best advance in learning management measurement. But she also just recently accepted an advisory role position at Synapse so that she could take all of that <laughs> knowledge and help Synapse to the next level. So thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me, Ryan. I always like to start off with stories. Everybody loves hearing stories. And I would love to learn more about your story on how you even got into learning and development. Well, I'm going to go back to my formative years. I grew up on a sprawling farm in Virginia. And um, for those who are listening that and watching, perhaps that uh, have grew up, have grown up on the farm, you know, there's other than labor, there's hardly anything to do. So you have to use your imagination. And that is where I spent a lot of time reading and a lot of time imagining and back in the day, before Google, there were encyclopedias, and those encyclopedias transported me everywhere, to other countries, to outer space, to places, and to exposing me to things that I had not been exposed to um, growing up on the farm. And so that's where it really all began, um, this, this um, kind of this thirst for um, learning and uh, curiosity, which led me into the military. Um, and in the military, for pretty much every military around the world, um, it's kind of known for leadership development and training is just embedded in everything we do from day one. Um, and that's really what um, kind of got me on this journey towards becoming a learning practitioner. And um, there's a lot of other things in the story, but I imagine through these questions, we'll get to some of those things. But that's where it all began for me, Ryan. Thanks for sharing. Mm. The LearnOps Leadership Series is all about talking about the operational side of learning and mm -hmm. development, because for whatever reason, the industry just doesn't talk about it enough. Um, the, you know, it's, it's not considered sexy, but it's the part that every L&D team needs to do mm -hmm. and do well. I mean, you and I have had some pretty extensive conversations on treating learning like a business. What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, learning like a business. Um, here's the thing. There's been some recent research, and I wrote this down because I think it's important for this conversation. I read recently there is a, a, a survey that, and, and I think we all know this part, l and is good at delivering resources. Got that nailed. However, this research found that learning professionals confess that they lack the skills needed to measure how these resources are performing. Furthermore, it revealed that 51% of the L&D professionals say they cannot use data effectively due to L&D lacking in-house data skills. So it's not just data skills. Oftentimes, L&D professionals lack commercial acumen um, and so when you think about running, learning like a business, first of all, you have to understand how to run a business or have some commercial acumen. And most people who are running a business like yourself, you also have to have data acumen because you need data to support uh, your performance, support your pitch to investors and, and et cetera. So learning, running, learning like a business is basically using data to inform business insights about what you actually should be delivering, what resources you actually do need to deliver to the business. And I think those are the things, one, as a backstory to what it means to run learning like a business. It should be like any other 
vertical in a, in a company. It should be run like a business with, a, you know, operational expenses, uh, capital, capital expenses. Um, and those, that's the kind of language, if you will, for learning practitioners that think about it in this way. Those are the kind of words that they would be using and the kind of practices that they would be employing um, as they oversee learning. So re really understanding return of learning investment and the impact of any time or resources spent. Mm. What did that mean for the business? What did that mean for employees? But also having the tools almost to be able to do that. I, I mean, I, I recently talked to a VP of L&D at a, a very large bank and they hired a data analyst to try and take all of this data using C CSV spreadsheets and put into Power BI, but uh, you know they could only run reports once a month just because it was so onerous. Mm -hmm. And by the time they ran the reports, the information was outdated because the team was moving so quickly as well. Right. I mean, so I I agree with you. It's mindset, but also probably that whole agile methodology and having the right tools. Given where you've seen L and D operations or learn ops, as we call it. How do you think that's impacted now in a post-COVID world with digital transformation? Um, oh my goodness. Um, there, there's- <laughs> Big question. <laughs> it is a big question, but in the first instance, I feel like as it relates to some big changes that I've noticed across the L&D, let's call it human capital and learning industry, is there's been an acceleration of alternative learning uh, methodologies. There's been more focus on um, an equitable workforce. That's just a reality. Uh, there's been more focus on promoting well-being. So those are some holistic things that I think are happening. But then I believe there are many companies that are shedding their L&D functions, but there are many companies that are now investing more in L&D resources. And I think there is going to be, at least in my experience, more of a burning imperative for practitioners to be able to uh, establish what that return on investment is. Um, and I think a big part of that is, one, knowing what data to collect, two, what to do with that data when you get it, and three, um, have the ecosystem in terms of uh, whether it's the tech stack or or uh, processes and strategy, learning strategy, to be able to actually determine what that return on investment is. And today, most times those are all separate things. It's not built into one single platform to do that. And I am one of those people who hired a whole team of data scientists when I was at Dell Technologies and Coders to do exactly uh, what you described in your example. So I, 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 I have felt the pain personally <laughs> and had yeah, to come up with a solution. It's a big problem. Yes. No, definitely a, a big problem. Given that, you know, you've hired people, you've built an operating model. What, what would you say to the audience who, who watches this? Mm -hmm. Like what, in your opinion, is a modern approach to L&D operations? Ooh, like, what, what have you... <laughs> Yeah, what I mean, what even coming into City Block, yeah. like what were some of the the first focus areas to build your operating model? Like what you know, what 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 do you think works the best, and why? Well, I feel the first thing, uh, first things first, is understanding the business and understanding the business, the business and the product that the company's selling. Um, it's great to get second and third hand information about what the needs are. And typically that comes from managers or people, but from getting out in the field and understanding the business and understanding how, what products you're selling. And I think that's one of the most important things, creating a learning strategy. I think it's so important to give the company the direction and vision of where we need to go. So based on what, you know, I've learned, let's just use me, for example, what direction do I think we need to go? Where, what direction do I think we need to go? So building a strategy, I think it needs to be in that strategy in terms of the actions tied to executing on the strategy, being able to clearly correlate those learning objectives to business outcomes. What are the business KPIs? So in the process of doing a listening tour is understanding what are those key performance indic indicators that drive the business. 
Uh, in the second instance, I think it's maybe this is the fourth. It's having a strong understanding of data and commercial acumen. I think that one of the things for me is building that capability or uplifting that capability within a, within my team and in my previous teams um, so that you can um, be able to correlate learning objectives to business outcomes. And I think the other thing would be under, having, um, uh, you know, doing a, a, a survey of your tech stack. I think, as you know, Ryan, most companies have even at a high growth company like CityBlock, we've got multiple different learning platforms. Um, but think about bigger companies. They have so many different learning platforms because you've got people in the business buying platforms. So there's no centralized um, learning tech stack ecosystem, if you will. It's all disparate. So those are some of the things that I would say, man, if you could bundle all that into one platform, um, um, I think, and I think that would be the magic and you've already started on that journey with Synapse. So I think this is something that the, the industry, it's not just about human capital learning industry. This is about business. So across the landscape of, of corporations, uh, who spend over $300 billion a year on learning interventions with no return on investment. <laughs> I think um, it highlights an opportunity, if you will, to, if we're going to spend that money, just be a good steward over that money. And a lot of leaders you know, that we talk to, they, they do try and find an all-in-one technology. And I think it's important to have purpose-built technology for very specific problems like learning operations, mm. like learning delivery. Um, and these types of technologies can very well speak together um, in today's world mm. using iPaths or connectivity softwares and, and things like that. Going back to the commercial side of things mm. where L&D is versus where other business units are. I mean, I feel that learning and development is kind of 10 years behind where software and development used to be. So, you know, software developers, they didn't have DevOps, they didn't have Agile. And now today, when you talk about software, it's all about DevOps, it's all about Agile. And I feel that learning is now going through that same transformation. Mm. One problem I see is that L&D leaders have a tough time buying new technologies you know, often they have that one big budget item for the LMS, but they have a hard time getting the business to understand that they need to invest into these other softwares as well. Why do you think that is? Because they don't have the data to support the investment. And that's the bottom line. Um, and so one of the one of the things that it, it might sound like a minor thing, but one of the things in the previous businesses I've worked in is having a automated intake. So just like IT and tech and most companies, they've got a service request intake that you go in. If you have any issues with any of your devices, you make that request and you get support. Learning should have the same thing, um, but it helps with efficiency in terms of the workflow within learning operations, but it also gives you the ability to capture data on where those requests are coming from and what the demand is on the resources and using that data to inform some of the investments that need to be made in learning. And I think, again, going back to my point about data and commercial acumen, this is where that uh, proof point of L&D practitioners being literate in data and commercial kind of business processes and practices is so important. So starting with intake to collect data and strategy as well, which you mentioned earlier, what other parts of the learning operations process helps to ultimately get to a place where you can do learning management and measurement effectively? I really think you need a operating model is what I would say. So along with the strategy is like, how does learning operations work from the time a request comes in to the learning um, kind of division or group to the cycle it takes on that journey to 
um, being able to deliver that learning intervention or solution. Uh, so I do think you need an operating model, just like a company has an operating model. I do feel like you need to have some kind of measures around uh, service, service level agreement, like how long is it going to take to deliver this learning product to the customer or to the business? Um, I think those are some a handful of things that you need. And again, I think people within the learning space need to understand kind of that journey and understand how to kind of walk people through that are your operating process. The other thing I think is important is you, you know, when these requests are having a strategy, you know what the priorities are, but then, you know, what the KPRs, KPIs are of the business um, in order to be able to um, establish if learning can indeed actually move the needle on those KPIs. I think that's really important. And again, this all comes down to being efficient, being effective, um, and being able to capture the return on investment. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So understanding retention and what learning can go into optimize retention. If that's a KPI, that's a big focus. Um, and then you can really focus on how do you measure it? Because it's here are the results before this learning and here are the results after the learning. And this is how it impacted business. So, right. you know, really focusing on the outcomes, as you said right. earlier and as if, well. And if I could add something, Ryan, for those that are listening and I'm a trained researcher. And so one of the things in research, you have a control group and a treatment group. And so I'm a big believer in doing pilots or experiments. Some people might not call them uh, pilots, but experiments so that you can get a better understanding of if um, you're going to see evidence that learning can make a difference in the business for whatever that KPI is. Example, if it's reducing call handling time, you know, your control group or the people who've been using the, the, the job aid or the PowerPoints or whatever, whatever it is you've been doing conventionally compared to those who are now being exposed to your new innovative learning solution um, and seeing whether it's making a difference. So I am a big believer also in experimenting um, and having, again, control group and your treatment group. This is using data to inform your next right move as it relates to learning. Running these controlled experiments, iterating by using the data so that we're not making assumptions mm -hmm. um, and taking this waterfall approach, which a lot of learning people still do with Addy or whatnot. They think the outcome is what the outcome will be, but right. there's so much learning to getting there. I mean, it's the same with business as an entrepreneur. It's a mistake that I personally made lots of times where so this is a great idea, like, let's go do it. But along the way, you start to learn um, that maybe it's not exactly how you thought it would work out. So by running these experiments, which is one of the values at Synapse, and iterating on those experiments mm -hmm. from the learnings, it gets you there a lot faster and a lot more efficiently as well. Right. Now, this, this is really insightful. I guess one last question, you know, in your opinion, what are some of the biggest um, challenges that are holding L&D people or professionals back from really seeing operational efficiency? Mm -hmm. I think I, I already touched on those and I'm going to touch on those again. And I think it's, um, it's developing a clear learning and development strategy or human capital and learning strategy, understanding the products and the business model, Connecting learning with business KPIs, um, developing commercial and data analytics acumen, and those are the, the for me those are the key things I think uh, have been prevailing challenges for L and D practitioners will continue to be <laughs> challenges if practitioners and or the business um, doesn't create some kind of pressure to help um, get people to realize that it's important to be able to with the especially with the kind of spend that that is 
invested in uh, learning resources. I think it's so important that um, these are the things that uh, learning practitioners, you know, consider strongly in order to kind of eclipse the struggles, the perennial struggles that we've we've long had in this field as it relates to being able to show return on investment for any kind of human capital and learning uh, in, investments. This has been super valuable. Thank you so much, Sydney, for your time. Thank you. Um, I've learned a lot from this conversation and uh, hopefully the viewers of this session have been able to take away some valuable content as well. I hope Thank so, so too. Much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to the series. For more information and content on LearnOps, please like, share, and subscribe. Visit GetSynapse.com to learn more about our operations platform.